coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. What is chevaline? It's horse meat. Is it? So if you're making a horse meat steak, you might tenderize it. So not to beat a dead horse, but how long do you tenderize chevaline? <laughs> Your enthusiasm is just <laughs> drawing me in. Dum, dum, da, da, village Idiom. Hello and welcome to The Village Idiom. That's right. Welcome to our show, a podcast that takes a shallow dive into a popular idiom, saying, or phrase. We're going to look at its meaning, its origins. We're going to use it to hang our conversation on. All of those things today. My name is Jurassic Mark. I am Skinny. And welcome back, Skinny. You've been on a road trip. It's fantastic. I had a couple week vacay uh, out on the road with a little bit of uh, pre recorded love in the previous episodes, but. For this one, this is where don't, we're... You don't need to give away our secrets. As far as no. they know, it's all live. <laughs> Every, everything. What you're listening to right now is happening in your right ears. now. If you downloaded it yesterday to listen today at work, it's still live. No matter what happens, what it's it, live? We are there for you. That would be... Uh, that sounds like some crazy that's, streaming technology. That's customer service. Right, for everyone who jumps in. Sorry, guys, I just said that, but give me a five seconds back on this yeah, one. Let me just go back. Uh, Joe at the sawmill just joined us. Welcome, Joe. Anyway, we were just talking about... <laughs> the person who got in first. Like, I hate this dude. You know what? That's, that's, have you ever been on a conference call like that? Oh, my goodness, Where someone, yeah. bing, beep, welcome. Oh, man, who just joined us? <laughs> it's usually... Uh, Mike, mute, would you turn your mute, microphone Mike, off? Mike, mute that. <laughs> Yelling at his kids in the background, the dogs barking. We can hear you, Mike. Mike, we can hear you. He's not paying attention. Say hi. <laughs> if we should kick out Mike. Yeah. Let's, let's take it to a vote right now. <laughs> so fun. Yeah, it was an amazing holiday. Good. Uh, so from Vancouver to Wyoming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything, uh, everything in between was amazing. You, like, you just family vehicle right no like minivan and a tent trailer yeah, yeah. so it's all a, tent trailer it's a or redneck a... starter kit <laughs> <laughs> all trailer or did you hotel it at all uh, the last uh the last night well we did a uh, great wolf lodge oh right the last night it was very it was more fun than i thought it was going to be right right yeah oh you, you my first time I, well i'm not a real fan of like so like uh, I'm, i enjoy fun but then there's that <laughs> water park yeah. The thing where you're like, you're pretty much going to a hotel and water park is, is right. the gist of yeah, it. Yeah, I've never been, but I've heard a ton about it. And, and so it's a great water park, except I just don't like love like standing around half naked with a bunch of strangers. Like, no. Hey, here I am. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Have you, do you listen to the, you're just making conversation in the line. Still you ever don't. heard of the village idiom? <laughs> you probably have. <laughs> I know you don't recognize me with no shirt on, but. <laughs> Yeah, so that that water perkness is not like my my jam, but there's that magic. Th- they have a little magic thing around the okay, hotel. But it's not your jam, but when you got on the rides, I've heard it's a decent water park. It's a, it is. It's yeah. a great one. We had also within the big that trip, toilet flush funnel one been well. So within that same this same trip, we're at Silverwood Theme Park, which half of it is in bold- Idaho. In Idaho, ah, I've been there. Yeah, so the Boulder Boulder Bash or whatever it is, it's a massive water park. It's like triple the size. So yeah, we'd been water parked out. We'll be at we'll do Cultus sometime this year, and so yeah. But it, it was a good experience. But outside of that, I really loved the ma- they have this magic game, right? Yeah, I've that's heard about throughout this. all the floors, um, kind of in the lobby elevators area, and you're running around with your uh, wizard wand doing some Harry Potter, making like the bear come to life and yeah, yeah, find yeah. this. And, and it's quite elaborate, that. right? It like is elaborate. Multi-leveled. It, it must have taken us six hours to complete. Wow! And so we did. Did you do it in one go? Uh, over two, 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 like two evenings. Yeah. yeah. So you can pause it and pick it up where you... Uh, yeah, totally. But in the end, you're like fighting a silver dragon and portals to other worlds. And That's it's great. Like, yeah, it was really entertaining. That's really I great. I feel like I got my, my $25 out of it or whatever it was. Is it that cheap? Oh, for the wand. Yeah, just the wand. The oh, wand yeah. game combo. But it's a, it's a costly affair great wolf lodge oh family. yeah yeah yeah. that's obscene yeah <laughs> yeah i think uh all of my other trips accommodations combined right equaled one day Well, because you lodge. guys enjoy the tent trailer situation right like that's I vacation for you guys i love it I, I was going for it um so you know how some things you're like i've tried this before it's never gonna work i'm gonna try it again it's never gonna work it's really futile yeah well this time i decided i'm going to bake over a campfire 
Yeah, you were talking about okay. this a little bit. So the gist was a cast iron like pot with a cast iron lid thing, and so I did like full pineapple upside down cake over a campfire. In a campfire, I baked shortbread. Man, um, that's, it, that's it, it was how fun. I, I, camp. I did brownies, <laughs> and so just because to say I could do it. Yeah. So instead of like, cause I've tried baking things in a fire before and it's just like one side is blackened, carcin- carcinogenic. Right, like, right, right, right. Don't eat this or you'll die. <laughs> but you, you eat the part that's still good. One half is like dough and the other half is burnt. It's like, this is terrible, but I've, I've got it down now. I've tried stuff over a fire and I fail and I try and I fail and I try and fail. I tried s'mores in an ice cream cone wrapped in tin foil just recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fail. Like it's just bl- blackened cone. And I'm done trying. Like that s'mores in a cone is never happening you have, again. You've you've flogged this idea. Yeah, over and over and over. You know what? Why don't we get into today's thing? I got a little clip for you. Uh, see, check this out. Let's give it a quick once over anyway. Maybe they forgot something. You enjoy beating a dead horse tubs. Uh, oh, the only part that gave it away is right the, the tubs. Very, yeah. A little There's Miami a, Vice. Little glitches in there, but yeah, Miami Vice. That is uh, Tubs and Crockett. That is actually season one, episode one. Really? Yeah. And oh man, I really like Miami Vice. Oh, totally. But yeah. that is today's uh, idiom du jour: is beating a dead horse. Beating a dead horse. Don't beat a dead horse. Beat a dead horse. Whatever. Flog a flog a flog dead a horse. dead bo- a dead horse. We're gonna get into that too. Well, I, I have a I have a great dead horse story to kind of get <laughs> things going. Okay. So my my brother in law uh, Ryan and. I we've, we've talked about him on our geocaching yep. adventures. On one particular adventure, it was him, I am. We took my son Ian out to Tulamine, which is kind of by Princeton, okay, for this big geocaching event. And the GPSs that I was using at the time could only read the first ten letters of the geocache name. Okay. So if it was like Wonderful World, it'd be like Wonder, Wonder, and, <laughs> and that was the end of it. So we're going through and wonderful whoa. <laughs> and so we're working and it only did the first 10 letters. Okay. Spaces were included anyway. And so we're in tool meters having a great time. We're all in the back country. And with my, my son, I, I don't know, I guess he was eight or something at the, at the time. Mm-hmm. And he, we were looking for, so he's like, what's next? Cause it would show which geocache is closest right, to you. So which one's up, next? Which read, one's next? Read the screen. Yeah. And so, was, and so the name of this one was dead horse. Okay. And so, but, it doesn't read all the letters. Oh no! And so he's like, uh, "Guys, are we are we looking for a dead horse?" We're like, "What did he just say?" <laughs> like, will you repeat that, buddy. It's like dead horse. So it's, yeah, out in the woods searching for dead horse. The next one on the list, dead <laughs> horse. And we we're losing it because we that's just so funny. Yeah. And the more we ignored or not answered him, the more he would say it. It's like dead horse. The, the next one, <laughs> we're going to look for dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> Which really cracked me up. Well, that's, and then the end of it, yeah. when we got to the geocache, uh, where it was a dead horse. Where, where, where it was, was the, the disemboweled, like, skeletal remains of, like, uh, we thought it was a deer, but it was likely uh, a dead horse. And wait, 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 wait. Like, it, there was the skeleton of a dead animal. So they would near where, where be, the geocache And that's why was. it was named that? Yes. Oh, okay. But there was also a pile of women's shoes. No. Yes, like a pile, like to fit inside of a, a like a Rubbermaid that's bin. Freaky. Man. Yeah, we're looking for dead horse. We found a pile of shoes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's that's creepy. <laughs> but that was the dead. That's horse. really funny though. The dead horse cash. That's funny. That's an idiom that didn't catch on. <laughs> Not to beat a dead horse or anything. No, that one. That's entirely <laughs> illegal and inappropriate. I'm sure it said somewhere. Uh, so the meaning of our idiom today, to beat a dead horse, is to continue an action or a discussion or an argument of something that is already concluded. There is no point to have this discussion. It is fruitless. It is fruitless. It's stupid. Like, uh, I, I wrote down just a usage example. Why do you insist on beating a dead horse but bringing up these old problems of ours? Like, it's done. Quit bringing it up. It's not if I, not if I keep bringing it up, it's not. <laughs> right, that's true. <laughs> I have no good... Oh. This horse is a zombie. Because it's like dead, but you keep bringing it to life. Oh, that's funny. You keep reanimating this horse. <laughs> I'm surprised that hasn't been said somewhere. What is this, a zombie? What do you mean? Or are you just beating a dead horse? <laughs> You're beating a dead horse. You're trying to bring a dead horse back to life. Hilarious. Yeah, some sort Re-animated. of... Reanimated. That... Oh, I want to use that The somehow. horse animator? That's like... People have no idea. What? It's like because you've, you've resurrected dead horses. Yeah. So you're their horse reanimator. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you, somebody brings it up again. Just use that. Instead of using the common... Way to saying, bring that up again. It's like, you, nice one, horse at reanimator. <laughs> <laughs> Equestrian reanimator. Just wow. like make it complicated. What? What did you Whatever call Whatever a horse is in you Latin. Equestrian reanimator. Lupus something. Uh, well, yeah. So uh, th- this one has uh, some interesting background, and we're we're a ways into this episode. So let's jump right in with. Um, well, you know what we're jumping in with. I said some words. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? No one can know. I turned around and looked behind. Those words came from another mind. All right, so let's get into the origins. This phrase may originate with horse racing. Mm. This one is, this part is unsure, where horses are, you know, they're hit or beaten, whatever the correct term is, by the riders and to get them to I, move I faster. Think of beating, I think of it more as a, 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 like a tap, or as you would refer into your, into your hosts as a big talk. What? A big talk. Yes. Now, this phrase oh. came up... <laughs> Again, again in your house, because I know my house is your house. This is your house's phrase is we're having a big, big talk in relation to children and disciplining of children. It means some people are not into corporal little, punishment, uh, some form of a spank on the butt or you're whatever. You're going to get some sort of spanking. See, uh, ours corporal was, punishment to keep you're people. probably referring to me, but ours was always, um, um, do you want to be in trouble? Well, that's funny. Yeah. But I, the my problem record was, for your house was it was a, a big talk. Maybe we did with our older boys. I don't remember that. With yeah, our youngest. Not with was, the youngest. But, oh, do you want to be in trouble? With with the older. Which has, was sure. a problem because their teachers would some, Leland, you're going to be in trouble. And yeah. in, her, in her mind, it's it's a swat on the bum. R- right. And which so which I don't, we don't do. It was because <laughs> that's inhumane. That We don't do that, but we, 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 we will threaten we her. We beat horses. but <laughs> In front of her. That's your punishment. Do you want me to do? do you want me to beat this dead horse? I will beat I, this horse. <laughs> oh, so help me, I will beat this horse. <laughs> the, this Don't beat the horse. <laughs> but yeah, it was a big talk. Do we need to have a big talk? Yeah, that's because while you're in the, the supermarket, that's what the jockeys do on their horses. <laughs> well, they have a big talk. <laughs> while you're in the supermarket, yeah, do you feel like you we don't need want to say we need to have a big talk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Z- so the, the little whip beating. that they have is called a riding crop. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. That. I'm learning stuff. You're just like, yeah, this is old news. So it's like miniature whip used, slap the horse on the thigh or the rump, and uh, gets them to run faster. But they, the poten- the potential of the idiom coming from actual horse racing is that when you're whipping your horse. And it's no longer like it's at top speed. That's that's all it's got. It's too tired to accelerate anymore. I've beaten as, her as you much are, as she can, Captain. You are beating a I dead. Can't beat her anymore. You are beating a dead horse. Yeah, it's like it's not dead, but it's so it could come from that, um, and which made me think about Secretariat, the the most famous racehorse probably ever. Is that the one with Tobey Maguire? That's the movie about okay. a okay. real horse called Secretariat who has won. Who won? It was the first time in 25 years that there was a triple crown, and has uh, it has records set on multiple courses uh, that stand today. Wow! So truly, even with all the hormone injections and stuff, we can horse get them? racing can't beat that dead horse. <laughs> That's funny. They can't beat the. De- you can't beat a dead horse. Not to beat a dead horse, you won't. Secretary's <laughs> records amazing. are holding. So. Um, most likely, though, uh, this idiom doesn't come from horse racing at all. But that that's out there. That like people are like, it could be this. It makes sense. Wasn't racing horses, but on this trip while I'm in uh, Montana and Wyoming, uh, went on a horseback ride with the family. Oh, fun! Which is like, I'm sure I've done it as a child. I don't have any clear recollection, but it seems like one of those things that we would have done. But this one was just amazing. The backdrop of, of Yellowstone. Oh, man. And yeah. so it's just like mountain range of, of beauty. And so I made sure to snap some shots. Real fond memories. That is cool. Yeah, the horse, I did. I neither beat it nor was it dead. But it was a horse race or a horse ride, recent activity that pretty impressive. That's, yeah, that's a bucket list kind of thing. They're so big. I don't know if I would be have the courage to beat a live horse. Uh, well, it depends on what you mean by... Do you remember the movie Blazing Saddles? <laughs> yeah. Where like he just the fart scene. punches the horse oh. in the mouth. Just like, bam. <laughs> so the fart scene, my horse was Mr. Z, because he's a triplet, X, Y, and Z. And so he was Mr. Z. But every time Yours that horse, was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so every time he walked, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so my daughter is behind me. She's like, what are you doing with that? I'm like, I don't know. It just walked. 
Blame in the horse. <laughs> yeah, it was the weirdest thing. I'm like, what do you got in there? You got upset tummy or something. But yeah, that's is, funny. I, I I haven't gone horseback riding for. I have some funny horseback riding stories. Uh, maybe another episode when we have more time. Uh, so this idiom came into use like mid 1800s, okay. but probably this is the more legit, most likely the origins of this idiom, uh, probably derived from sailors slang of the 1600s. So sailors were often paid wages for their first month of work before they, before it was even performed to, to lock them in. Right. And for some reason, this month of prepaid work, and it ended up being in other, you know, uh, vocations as well, but, uh, um, Prepaid work was known as dead horse hmm. for whatever reason, like dead horse. And so after the first month of their voyage, uh, the sailors would would sometimes perform a ceremony known as flogging the dead horse because they've completed the prepaid month. Interesting. And so they would celebrate like we have flogged the dead horse. That's an interesting one. And so that would mark the end of their old work time. And so that that is concluded. Have you seen those cable clamps? And so if you do, use like some sort of like aircraft cable and it kind of makes a loop and then there's those clamp things yeah, that yeah. go on it. Yeah, yeah. There's a direction for those clamps so that you don't, the, the one side of that clamp is called the saddle. Oh yeah, that and makes so sense. so you don't put the saddle part on the loose dangly end, you put it on the other side. And the phrase is don't saddle a dead horse. Really? Yeah. So to help people remember to not put the saddly part on the loose dangly end of the loop. Right. But on the yeah, the main the stay. dead end of the yeah. loop. You don't saddle a dead D- horse. Don't saddle the dead horse is how it's Man, that'd be hard. Saddling a dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's so you uncooperative. Just help me prop this. Do you have a jack? Do you have a car jack or something? <laughs> Stupid horse. Oh, I should Oh, I have other stories. Saddling I helped a break horse. a horse. How did like, you break it? Like my cousins lived on like acres and acres of land. You're dumb. You're never going to amount to anything. <laughs> never been ridden, never been saddled. And we spent the summer breaking the horse so that it could be ridden. I was the first one to ride it. That's a story. Uh, uh, you wake up early and like tap water on its head. <laughs> it's not torturing a horse. <laughs> uh, be, uh, just for the record, we've said both beat a dead horse is primar- primarily the American version of the idiom and flog a dead horse is the mm-hmm. British version and where the sailors part of it come uh it's funny that the saying is i mean it's not necessarily a dead thing like don't beat a dead horse but that's better than saying like don't beat a horse dead <laughs> yeah i guess like don't beat a dead horse why not it's dead because <laughs> it's just like kind of twist if you've got it in your system that you've got to beat a horse might as well beat give a dead, him the one. dead one <laughs> like at least it seems more like civil no, not making it worse Okay, so our present meaning in, in, in the phrase beat a dead horse, which is expressed at, uh, is different than the sailor's version, obviously. But it appeared in print in 1859 in a report of a UK parliamentary debate involving, man, I don't know if I can say this name, Francis Wymus Charteris Douglas, hmm. 8th Earl of Wymus and 6th Earl of March, who is better known as Lord Elcho. I should have just gone with Lord Elcho. Uh, what so is thy bidding, Lord Elcho? He, 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 if the honorable <sighs> member of Birmingham, John Bright, had been present, he would have been asked the honorable gentleman, Lord Elcho, whether he was satisfied with the results of his winter campaign. It was notorious that he was not, and a saying was attributed to him that he found he was flogging a dead horse, referen- referencing his campaign. <sighs> so what they don't know is whether Lord Elcho originated the the saying or if he had stolen I'm doing Lord Elcho choking out a horse (laughs) stupid Lord Elcho do you think they're allowed to beat dead horses at glue factories wow I'm sure they have a name for it everything that's terrible has a secondary name that's a real thing right makes it sound better they make glue from like the collagen of horses hooves and do they inject that same collagen into your lips it's probably the same stuff wow so you can do it yourself with Elmer's (laughs) <laughs> and a syringe. <laughs> Just pump yourself up. Did you get did you, you know what you, you would be amazing at closing envelopes. <laughs> <laughs> you done your own collagen <laughs> syringe implanting with Elmer's glue and then you lick it. Ah uh, that's a skit right there. <laughs> yeah, okay, I, 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 let, let me change up the pace with okay. with, with, uh, with today's joke. My joke is uh it's for a uh, uh, it's about six people out there are gonna get my joke. That's perfect, man. Because <laughs> those six people are gonna think it's amazing. I'll, so I'll explain it. Narrow but it no down. Way. Even you are down. not gonna get my joke. All right. <clears throat> Let's see if you can get this one. So the Veterinary Society. Veterinary. 
Yeah, the Society of Veterinarians. <laughs> was hosting an information panel for all the vets, okay. as they do. And the guest panelists were Devo, Michael Jackson, and Aerosmith. Oh, I was expecting Lord Eljo. <laughs> and Lord Eljo. <gasps> so the host asks, Aerosmith, <laughs> if a horse breaks a leg, what do you recommend? The Aerosmith replies, well, Janie's got a gun. It's like, hmm, seemed deep and provocative. Janie's got a gun. Aerosmith is telling us you know, should probably put down a horse that's got a broken leg. It's very profound. Thank you, Aerosmith. Um, Devo, I have a question for you. Um, <laughs> if a dog needs discipline during training, what measures would you say to use, Devo? Well, whip it. Like, whip the dog? Yeah, whip it. Whip it good. And it's like, wow, I never quite considered that. And talking to the, the panel and addressing the crowd they're like wow this is pretty some pretty unorthodox stuff that they're talking about here comes in with a final question to you michael jackson for a final question with uh, art artificially fertilizing goats <laughs> what should we be aware of michael jackson well he suspiciously looked at them and said that kid is not my son oh i expected something else <laughs> which is why i made it <laughs> That's hilarious. I was like, drive this whole thing at beat it. And then not do it. And then it. not deliver. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> the kid is not my son. <laughs> Artificially fertilizing goats. That's awesome. Oh, that's good. Okay. That was really good. Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, here's my joke. Not to beat a dead horse, but how long do you tenderize Chevaline? Okay, I'm out. That's the whole joke. What is Chevaline? It's horse meat. Is it? So if you're making a horse meat steak, you might tenderize it. So not to beat a dead horse, but how long do you tenderize Chevaline? <laughs> <laughs> Your enthusiasm is just <laughs> drawing me in. Uh, was, <laughs> That's pretty good. If I if you knew what it was, if it was Chevaline, yeah. is this like a, a, a culinary cook word? Yeah. So I got into when I looking up dead horse stuff. I got into horse meat, and it I is, hate to see what your Google <laughs> stuff is going to start putting it's out. Concerning. Uh, Quick horse from horse the, meat is eaten from the all fence. over the world, and uh, really, and the only one that's like a. Uh, like a lot of English speaking countries are kind of like, nah, kind of taboo, mm -hmm. but not illegal or anything, except America. S many states have banned horse meat. Hmm. And, uh, but you know, one of the, one of the biggest markets is Quebec, Canada. Really? Yeah. And which is why it has a French sounding word, Chevaline. Chevaline. Horse and meat. Horse meat. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so they, they market it. And uh, when I was Wikipedia, horse meat, Chevaline, all that kind of stuff. Um, for those of you who don't know, we're recording in Vancouver here, and Granville Market, Vancouver, is one of the places you can go and get yourself no. some horse meat. Yeah, so I'm That's thinking we need to at least try it. Yeah, we have to have some horse meat. Got I to. did have bison in Yellowstone and elk. Yeah, just I've had bison. I I can't. I don't know if I've had elk. My grandpa was always a hunter, so I feel like it's I have. It's good. That. But bison, but yeah. Chevaline, that's Chevaline. coming up. I haven't had that's that. That's a good word. I like learning new words like that. Uh, I want to do Riddling with you, uh, Skinny, but um, let me play you another little clip here. Are you ready for okay. this? Who can't be beat? A dead horse. 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 School spirit is a curious term. <laughs> is that putty? That is. Yeah. It's not Seinfeld. Nope. That is, um, cool. Okay. Is he Lemony Snickets? Yes. Okay, uh, yeah. He's the narrator of Lemony Snickets. That's I'm right. My so putty, a, putty things that would have children. Yeah, what's his name? W Warbur putty. Warburton. It's, his name's Putty. Something Warburton. Uh, he, uh. What a distinct voice. So that I was lost until I don't know if you voice. can hear what they were saying, but who can't be beat? A dead horse. And so some creepy school spirit, like their their team mascot is a dead horse. That's so funny. So they're cheering, who can't be beat? A dead horse. <laughs> this is funny. Okay, Riddle Link is a game we made up that takes a two-part trivia question or riddle and requires a two-part overlapping answer, overlapping by sound, syllable, or word. And uh, we've been playing it for years and now get the opportunity to share it with you guys. So uh, we'll do a few back and forth here and then leave one for... I'll start off with an easy one to warm the crowd into it. All right. 
this idea is going nowhere in War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds. Oh, oh, uh, okay. No, I got Tom Cruise in my head. Not but Tom where Cruise. you're going with this is uh, Don't Beat a Dead Horse and Wells. That's the one. Yes. I, like, what's his Orson name? Orson Wells, probably his most famous thing, War of the Worlds. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. His, his reading. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot he did, but. He did do a lot, but. Okay, this one, uh, I, again, I was torn as to which one to give you, which one to leave for our illegitimate children out there, but um, I'm hoping you have energy in your answer with this one. Okay. So, the Lone Ranger would have said this to his now presumably dead horse while listening to this guy sing the theme from the Dukes of Hazard. The Lone Ranger would say this to his now presumably dead horse while listening to this guy sing the theme to the Dukes of Hazard. Do you so remember? Do you remember who sings the theme? Oh, the, the well, I'm going with high ho silver. Yeah. High ho silver bells, silver. No, there's oh. a there's a little more to what he says to his horse. High ho silver away. High ho silver away. And what was that final bit? Dukes of Hazard. Who we sings know that? that? Guy. He's the narrator. I know. We, we talked, just talked about, about it. this. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to make me angry when that recall goes away. I was hoping you would belt out, Hi ho, Silver! Oh, Waylon Jennings! Waylon Jennings! <laughs> oh, the good one. That's tricky. Okay, give me another one. I hope some of our illegitimate children beat me on that one. They're like, Say it! They definitely do. Say did. it! Okay, here we go. <clears throat> it's a little more obscure. This Ivy League glazed purple root vegetable oh my goodness this ivy league glazed purple root vegetable is an action that is fruitless what ivy league purple root vegetable did i get it all yeah glazed is in there if that helps it's a, it's a, it's a type of beet <laughs> do i actually know I didn't know there was types of beets. There's this is a pre a prepared beet. a prepared version. I of just beet. bought beet salsa this week. Interesting. It was good. It's <laughs> beet a prepared beet. I don't know. I don't know what type of beet. Okay, it's a Harvard beet. Oh, Ivy League. I still wouldn't have known. I've never heard of a Harvard beet, but Harvard well, we beet had the Harvard horse. beets as kids, and so they would come from a can. And I we know, probably did I too. My I just mom, my beets. mom is listening to this, but this is one of those items in life that you know we tried everything as kids sure but this is one of those things where as you eat them you're like throwing up in your own mouth <laughs> you're like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and you're, you're you're actually vomiting in your own mouth do you like beets it. or no has that killed it for you um not so much but I'll, I'll now i do eat anything so her technique worked i guess depending on how you look at it but not without some some harvard, vomit eating harvard beat a dead horse harvard beat a dead horse yeah, I was trying to think of like a unique, the only other one is a sugar beet, but I didn't know if that would. I, I wouldn't, that sounds more familiar, but I wouldn't have Harvard remembered beets. any kinds of beets. There you go. Back beet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all I got. Okay, what, you, what do you got here to send us home? All right, this one goes out to you, but uh, we want you to actually reply, like send us a message, get in contact with us. Uh, you know, let me throw a quick shout out before we give this puzzle, because uh, uh, the last one we were talking about your birthday and we're like, hey, if any of you have a, a birthday out there share it with us not just i mean everybody has a birthday but <laughs> share a birthday in the month of july i don't have one if anybody's got a birthday contact us you were no born in a test tube anyway i I've, it's funny to say the same name because this one person has been e eagerly answering all our riddle links and he, happens he, to share a birthday he's, with you he's a dude the yeah, escalade the the underscore escalade shares a birthday with skinny so Happy birthday. It's awesome. Well, make sure you reach out to us at the.village.idiom on Instagram or the Village Idiom Podcast on Gmail or Three Minutes Gone uh, via the other social networks, uh, YouTube, Twitter. Yeah. Perfect. You ready That's for this? Thing. Yeah, let's send them home. All right. This, this is for you guys. Make sure you reply. Don't continually bring up this useless discussion about one of the earliest names for the motor car. Wow. Baffler. You're going to have to cut that down into a few pieces. Tell them one more time. Don't continually bring up this useless discussion about one of the earliest names for the motor car. 
<laughs> with the same cadence and everything. Sounds like we sampled that. Sounds like a winner. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's podcast. We enjoyed putting it together for you. I am Skinny. I am Jurassic Sakura Niku Mark. And these are the Village Idioms. That's three minutes done.